this in the Pledge of Allegiance this morning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the April 27th, 2017 meeting of the Shawnee County Board of Commissioners. My name is Bob Archer. I currently serve as chair of the commission and represent District 3 alongside Commissioner Shelley Bueller, who represents District 1, and Commissioner Kevin Cook, who represents District 2. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. First item, please. <coughs> item 1, proclamations, presentations. Introduction of CSL as the market research consultant for the renovation of the Kansas Expo Center and a presentation by CSL. Charles Smith, HTK Architects. Good morning, Commissioners. Chuck Smith, HTK Architects. I'm happy to be here today and excited to uh, introduce our marketing research analyst consultant that we've uh, been able to bring on board here in the last couple of weeks and really start ramp this up and get started on evaluating uh, you know what we what's good for Expo and what's good for the event center here so wh um, with that I'd like to introduce Bill Kruger and Joel Feldman they've been here already uh, yesterday starting this process with the advisory board uh, as well as SMG's uh, group and talking about the facility itself and, and touring the facility and we have a number of people we're going to meet with today and tomorrow um, but I'd like Bill to come up speak a little bit about um, his firm uh, with you guys and talk a little bit about his process. Good morning. Good, morning. Good to be here. Pleasure to speak with you, County Commissioners. Um, this is an exciting point in time. We're, we're here and we're talking about the future of the Expo Center. I'd like to just uh, chat just for a couple minutes, give you a little introduction about us and what we're going to be doing. Um, I just got in town yesterday, and so we had a, a great day of tours and, and meetings with, uh, with the advisory board and uh, other groups, and going to be in town for the next couple days uh, doing uh, additional meetings, and so it's really the start of our process. In terms of who we are, we've worked with uh, Populous and, uh, and other firms around the country on projects just like this. We deal with anything related to event facility complexes. Um, I've, I'm a principal with CSL. I've been doing this for 22 years. Our firm's been around for 25 years. Worked in markets of all sizes around the country. Um, and so we, we hope to bring a lot of that experience and uh, insight into some best practices and other projects around the country to, to help you navigate uh, some of the questions about what the future of the Expo Center should be. Um, mm -hmm. We've done thousands of studies over 30 years. Uh, we've got a lot of experience in Kansas, frankly, and uh, in all states around the country. I think I've done work in every state except one or two. So, wow. you know, we've this a lot of a lot of projects and a lot of communities that are dealing with the same issues you're dealing with right now in terms of what's the best path forward in terms of improvement to maximize return on investment to make sure that it continues to serve as a community asset uh, you know, for to Topeka and and the county uh, in the regional area, uh, frankly, uh, moving into the future. And so that's, that's kind of what we're looking at. And, you know, we've, we've got a track record of objectivity, too. So if something doesn't make sense, we'll make sure that we come out and say that. You know, we've, we've said that in other places where if investment doesn't merit a uh, return on investment <clears throat> or if it's not a, a good course of action, uh, as you as stewards of the community's uh, tax dollars, and um, I'm sure that you want to make the best decisions for the community uh, that you can. You know, with this example of some of the work that we've done around the country, um, you'll see some projects of uh, various uh, types, but they're all related to event facilities. Um, you know, in this day and age, a lot of it deals with uh, looking outside the box, too, and thinking about are we creating a compelling experience and in a destination for event events, planners, promoters, attendees, spectators, participants. You know, it's all about integrating uh, and, and making this the best destination and community uh, that we can but we understand that um, that uh, you know we don't have an open checkbook uh, in terms of what types of projects we could pursue so we want to make sure that those are efficient and appropriate for the county and for and for Topeka um, so our scope of services this is our last slide this is what we're going to be doing this is going to take about three months uh, three three and a half months so we're going to be working closely with the design team we're at the very start of this right now 
at the end of that task one, task two, that gives us a sense of what the market is, what the incremental market demand for a project uh, would be in terms of renovation improvement and or expansion. And so we do a lot of research. We talk to a lot of stakeholders. We talk to a lot of past customers, current customers, and then potential new customers to, to help shape what, what the best project for, for the county and for Topeka is. Um, a lot of interviews, a lot of telephone work, you know, talking directly to the users and potential users to find out really what that market demand is. So as a part of this, then, through task three, four, and five, that's kind of an important step to say, okay, we know what the market demand is now. Let's benchmark what our existing complex is performing, how it's performing. You know, I think one thing that gets lost in a lot of projects like this that have been around forever is the importance of this project, of this, of this facility to the community mm -hmm. in terms of what it does annually that a lot of people don't know a lot about or are, are, aren't really aware of all the activities and, and things that are happening in the complex. And so as a part of that, we're going to have a, a baseline in terms of what the performance is today, what the economic impact of the complex is now, uh, and then we'll show what the increment might be with uh, renovation, development, expansion scenarios that we'll, we'll outline. So that's costs and that's benefits both today and then what could be had by virtue of uh, investment in an expansion or improvement project. And that kind of wraps up our process and, again, working very closely to to, to work with a, a program and with the design team to come up with, you know, some solution alternatives uh, for your consideration in terms of a project that, you know, in our mind uh, would best position um, uh, the Expo Center for the next 10, 20, 30 years. Any questions I can answer for you? Uh, well, you may have just got to town yesterday, but you know a lot about the Expo Center in our community already. Uh, right. I'm, I'm very impressed. Uh, and as we go about uh, investing $45 million in our community meeting spot, I'm glad you're here to help Good. us along that path. Great. Commissioner? I, I would just echo that as well. I think this is exactly what, as a commissioner, I was looking for mm -hmm. was uh, having that community engagement in the Expo Center which you've got outlined, having listening to the Expo Center as its current operation, looking at that uh, analysis, uh, really as we get down to task uh, four um, and three, really looking at our cost-benefit analysis of this is a huge investment of $45 million and making sure that we're giving good direction for our architects as, as we move forward so they know exactly where we can make the biggest bang for our buck. So. Thank you. You're good. Two things. Timeline? When Timeline, yes. Um, about three to four months is, is what we're looking at. We're, we're going to come back at the end of task one prior to getting into the cost and benefit and have a preliminary discussion uh, with the advisory board and the rest of the design team and, and the key stakeholders in terms of what the market demand analysis is showing. And then that sets up a, a recommendation of a building program and a, a type of product. So we want to make sure that we're interfacing and collaborating with uh, the stakeholders and the design team at that point to make sure that when we analyze costs and benefits under tasks four and five, which takes about another month, month and a half to wrap that up, um, we're, at, we're looking at the right scenarios that are realistic in terms of something that can be implemented um, within, within the budget. And then, two, um, I know you have a number of meetings and you're reaching out to stakeholders, mm -hmm. but if stakeholders want to reach out to you, do you welcome that? Yeah, of course. Okay. Of course, absolutely. So <clears throat> we've got a, a very long list right now, and just as of yesterday, we've, I think we've doubled that list based on our conversations <laughs> with, yeah. uh, with different folks. And so it's, you know, if we can't get in front of everybody with an in-person meeting at, at the course of this kickoff visit, we'll come back and do a second visit. Uh, but with any project like this around the country, there's always – hundreds of telephone calls that we're doing. So sure. we're happy to interface with them, either, you know, receive uh, input via, via email or set up a telephone conversation with, with different folks. Um, if it's something that's interest, we could also do a community survey, which is kind of an online survey that we can offer, you know, a wide variety of community members, you know, the, to offer their input that way too. So that's, that's something within this budget we'd be happy to implement that. We, we do that all the time. Great. And is your contact information on the website or? Sure. Oh, well, it's, it's, uh, I, I can get you a card and it's, uh, it's, it's on our website for sure. Okay. Um, but uh, we can get you that contact information. Okay. All right. 
to make sure the Capital Journal has yeah, it if we could. Sure, absolutely. That's exactly great. Right. Where I was going great. With it, That'd so. be great. Thank you. Good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks. Next item, please. Item three, consent agenda. Questions or comments on the consent agenda? I have none. I'll move approval. Second. Motion made to approve the consent agenda by Commissioner Bueller, seconded by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Oppose no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Item four, new business, A County Clerk number one, consider all voucher payments. Commissioners, this morning we have vouchers that total $702,891.03. The highlights are the payroll of $334,361.93, the elections office of $131,519.43, the majority of that is election software, the state of Kansas holding accounts, these are ve motor vehicle fees, and it is $75,708.95. Parks and Recreation, 58223 and $0.03. And finally, Solid Ways of $32,560.85. That makes up the bulk and majority of the vouchers. I do not have any questions regarding the vouchers, and I would move for their approval. I'll second. And how much was the election software again, Commissioner? The elections office was $131,519.43, and all but uh, 2500 of that is election software. Software. Okay. Thank you. Uh, motion made to approve the vouchers by Commissioner Cook, seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor say aye. Opposed say no. Motion carries 3 to 0. Next item, please. Item A2, consider correction orders. I'll move approval. Second. Motion made to approve by Commissioner Bueller, seconded by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Item B, Sheriff's Office. Number one, consider approval of resolution 2017-18, authorizing the issuance of a Shawnee County credit card for official business only with a $5,000 limit to, the, to Lieutenant Akeem Reynolds. No, I didn't intend on making a presentation, but as you can see, <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Tom Bronall, uh, Shawnee County Sheriff's Office, standing in for Sheriff uh, Jones. Mm -hmm. The request before you today stems from some reassignments that are taking place at the Sheriff's Office. The employee listed on the resolution uh, will be in charge of uh, agency purchasing come May 1st. Uh, he'll need a credit card in order to conduct agency business. So I'll try to answer any questions you might have. I don't have any questions. I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution. Second. Motion made to approve by Commissioner Archer, seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank, Thank you. you Next item, please. Item C, Public Works Number One, consider approval of request to award bid for the Southeast to come see Road Bridge over Stinson Creek project to Ebert Construction Company, Inc and authorization and execution of contract C-142-2017 for same in an amount of $250,466.50 with funding from the countywide half cent sales tax. Good morning, Commissioners. Tom Block of Public Works and Solid Waste. Uh, this is the Public Works item. As mentioned in the memo, we um, recently took bids for the Southeast Tecumseh Road over Stinson Creek uh, Bridge Project. Uh, we received six bids. Uh, with the low bid coming in from Ebert Construction of Omigo, Kansas, in the amount stated of $250,466.50. Um, this is well below the engineer's estimate. Um, we received excellent bids on this project, and Ebert is a very reputable company that we have used in the past, uh, so it's our recommendation uh, that this contract be awarded uh, to Ebert Construction. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Questions or comments for Tom? I have none. I would move for approval. Second. Motion made to <laughs> approve by Commissioner Cook. Seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. That motion carries three to zero. Right. Thank you, Thank Tom. You. Next item, please. Item D, Parks and Recreation. Number one, consider approval of request by the City of Topeka to grant a temporary easement for the City's repair work to a storm sewer in Crestview Park. Good morning, Commissioners. John Knight, Parks and Rec. Uh, this is a uh, request from the City of Topeka for a temporary easement to do some work through Crestview Park. Uh, Terry Bertles, Deputy Director, uh, helped negotiate all that contract. So if you have any sp uh, sp specific or detailed questions, I can have him a answer them. Just yes, Commissioner Cook. By the memorandum, it talks <clears throat> about this disruption of uh, pedestrian traffic or bicycles along the Shunga Trail. 
Uh, can we just talk a little bit about that? I think that those, if we can get the word out as early as possible, the Shunga Trail is used so much. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that we'll get the call after the work has begun, too. Sure. And, and uh, good morning. Terry Bertles, Parks and Recreation. Um, that is the regretful side effect of, of this project. Um, the, side, the, the trail will be closed between Gage and Fairlawn. Now, that's like a, a road detour, road sign that says closed through traffic. You can still use it. Just don't plan on being able to go under Fairlawn and then further west, if you will. So it'll be closed, um, but not, not, not for people that want to use the area between Fairlawn and Gage. Um, it's a relatively short duration of the project, 30 days. So I'm hopeful that the <coughs> impact will be minimal, but I can't stress too much the need for the project to be done because it is an unsafe situation as it stands right now. Do we have any idea when the city is planning on starting that? My conversations with them have been uh, that they have submitted their red line plans for completion to get the final plans. Uh, they hope to have an expedited bid letting process and have something out uh, June, July of this year for a 30 day construction period. Maybe perhaps as we get a little bit closer towards that closing, if we can again have a reminder from Parks and Recreation, mm. letting sure. uh, just I think the better word we get out, the more we can publicize it, the better off um, everybody will be. Because the worst thing that can happen is you plan on using the Shunga Trail and suddenly your trail's closed. Sure. And I'll, con I'll, I'll be in conversation with Mike McLaughlin in our office and, and whomever they might have in their office uh, from public communications to make sure we get the word out as best we can. Very good. I was just going to add, and it looks, according to the memo, it <coughs> looks like the area is already barricaded for, for safety reasons. It right? is barricaded. I was by there yesterday. Um, yeah, it, it stays barricaded for a while, and then somebody takes it upon themselves to make it convenient. Uh, so, you know, it's going to be a battle to keep it barricaded, but uh, there are barricades up there, both okay. underneath the bridge and coming down off of Fairlawn okay. Road itself. Okay. I'll move approval of the request. Second. Motion made to approve by Commissioner Bueller, seconded by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Next item, please. Item D2, consider approval of request to fill a bank at community events, amenities supervisor position at an annual salary, including benefits of $51,066, and to fill any position that becomes vacant as a result of filling this one. Uh, com commissioners, uh, just as the clerk just read, we've, ha we've had a resignation. Um, an employee took a job uh, in, in another locality, and we'd li like permission to open and fill that position. If you have any detailed question about what that position does, Sean Osborne supervises that division. It's in the uh, Outdoor Adventures Division. He'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Questions or comments? Motion? I'll move for approval. Second. Motion made to approve by Commissioner Cook, seconded by Commissioner Bueller. All in favor say aye. Oppose no. Motion carries three to zero. Thank you, John. Thank you, Commissioners. Next item, please. Item E, information technology number one, consider approval of the reclassifying of four positions. <clears throat> Good morning, Commissioners. Pat O'Blender with the information technology department. As highlighted in the uh, memo, uh, to the commissioners, uh, we've uh, had a senior technology programmer analyst uh, retire from uh, <coughs> service in Shawnee County. This individual held a pretty senior role in IT and held down uh, quite a few responsibilities. Uh, he did give us quite a bit of notice, uh, and we were able to ro roll those responsibilities out to other positions. And as a result of that, we would like to reclassify the positions that have taken on the additional responsibilities as detailed in the memo. If you have any specific questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Questions? Just Commissioner Cook. You've met with uh, Betty Greiner and with HR Jeff McMillan over yes. this. Yes, this was a particularly complex arrangement because it affects this year's budget and 2018's budget, and we're currently in the process of uh, laying out 2018's budget. And after extensive conversations with both uh, Betty Greiner and uh, Jeff McMillan, uh, this is uh, the way we are, uh, this is what we arrived at. So, yes, we had extensive conversations and, and worked the math very carefully on that. Additionally, I would also like to highlight that as a result of the way we did the classifications, uh, 
the, the one that uh, was uh, retiring is being reclassified to an entry-level position and consequently there will be no uh, impacts to the to the uh, budget that's been allocated for IT will be using will be on a flat budget thank you I'll move approval second motion made to approve by Commissioner Bueller seconded by Commissioner Cook all in favor say aye opposed no Motion carries three to zero. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Commissioner. Next item, please. Item F, Administrative Services, number one, update on revenues and expenditures. Good morning. Betty Greiner, Director of Administrative Services. I'm here with my uh, financial overview for March 31st <coughs> of 2017. We will start, uh, as we always do, on the revenue side. And as you will see, um, through March 31st, we had uh, revenues of $49,443,218. Our budget for that same time period was $49,984,074. So as you'll see, we have a, we are under our projected revenue um, at as of March 31 by 540,000. Um, I'll go into exactly why and, and where those variances are by category. Um, but you'll also notice that um, we are up from last year at this time by a million three hundred and twelve thousand dollars. And this chart just <coughs> as always does just shows the, the different categories and, and the amount that we received by from each category and really um, shows that the majority of our revenue comes from our property taxes. First category is property tax revenue. We've received $45,368,307. That uh, is $529,000 under what we had budgeted. Um, and a lot of that is just in this one month of March. Um, we have a, a smaller distribution in March of property taxes and our ad valorem tax was 244,000 less than I had expected. Um, the, you know, it, it's hard to say. Hopefully this is just a timing issue. We will not have another distribution until June. Um, but and then also our city county highway tax was down 105,000 from what was projected by the state. So mm -hmm. it's a combination of those two amounts is what makes up this. Um, we, we will kind of just wait and see, but, I, but as I will go through this, um, I do want to emphasize that our total variance for all of our revenue is 0.52%. So that's one half of 1%. So still within a very acceptable variance um, for, for you know, our total revenues. But that is what makes up this, this difference between budget um, and actual here. The next category is other tax revenue. <clears throat> We've received $1,715,655. That is $34,000 under expected, so right on, on budget there. Next category is property-related fees. We've received $488,800, which is actually $183,000 over um, what we had budgeted. Uh, this is May mostly mortgage um, fees, mortgage registrations. Um, we have the, the mortgage registration fees and then they have filing fees associated with that. So as we've, you know, <coughs> talked before, that can be a timing difference on, on when, you know, house sales start moving throughout the year. Um, or it could, you know, be, I know we did have one large, um, one large mortgage that we, I think, if I remember right, we retained about 75000 on that one mortgage. So, you know, things, that's one piece of this, of this puzzle or this pie here. Um, so we'll continue to watch that, but as of right now, we are 183000 over budget on that one. The next category is charges for services. We've received $1,042,417. That is actually 262000 under budget, and that's mostly um, from Department of Corrections and then Parks and Rec. You know, Department of Corrections, it's, it's, uh, we receive revenue when inmates from other jurisdictions are at our jail. 
And um, so that's really, I mean, we, we estimate that, but it's really hard to predict what that really will be at any given month and any given time. So there again, that can vary, you know, throughout the year up and down. Um, and the next category is other revenue. We've received $828,039. That is actually $101,000 over budget. Uh, the majority of that, 85000 of that, is additional investment income that we've received in this year. As interest rates have, have gone up, we've been able to um, receive more interest income than expected, and then the rest of it is just various items throughout the, throughout the departments. This is our pie chart that uh, just shows the, the different percentages, and as you can see, 96% of our revenue we've received uh, through March 31st is for property taxes. And then the other small amounts are all distributed between other taxes is 3%, property-related fees is 1%, charges for services 2%, and then miscellaneous is 2%. Uh, so any questions on the revenues? Okay, we'll go on to the expenditure side. We have, through March 31st, our expenditures were $25,960,576. Um, compared to our budget of $26,304,789. So for total expenditures, we are under our budget by $344,213, which uh, is, there again, my percentage is it's 0.33 percent, so a third of one percent. Uh, there again, within a very reasonable budget variance. I'll go into the different categories. Here again, we have the different categories, and it shows how uh, how they stack up, literally, on the on the chart here. The first category is public safety expenditures. We have spent ten million one hundred and sixty-two thousand six hundred and eighty-three dollars. That is um, actually $174,618 under budget, um, and those under budget amounts are mainly in the Sheriff's Department and the, um, I'm sorry, I, yeah, under budget, uh, and Sheriff's and the DOC. And, you know, there again we talked about the, the, <laughs> the difficulty in, in um, budgeting some of that by month and especially as they're trying to increase their um, positions and, and trying to hire for those positions, we're, we're trying to estimate how many of those positions they will get filled each month. So, um, but there again, on a big scale, this is within a very reasonable variance, um, budget variance. The next category is public health. We have spent 300 three million seven hundred and ninety five thousand nine hundred and forty eight dollars and that is right on budget and that is three hundred and four thousand less than last year um, as we've talked about that before a big part of that is the privatization of the um, health clinic administrative services we've spent four million four hundred and fifteen thousand five hundred and twenty nine dollars and that is two hundred and sixty thousand under budget the, the main reason this is so much under budget is because of our contingency fund that we established at the first of the year we have not had to use any of that contingency so far um, and when I was budgeting I just spread that evenly throughout the year so the fact that we have not had to use any of that <coughs> million dollars uh, you know we have have that uh, under budget at this point Next category is public works. We have spent $2,300,888, which is 52000 under budget, which is, again, right on budget. Um, and as I usually mention, you know, this does not include the, the expenditures from the sales tax. Next category is parks, recreation, and expo. We have spent $4,032,331. That is actually 142000 over budget as the Parks and Rec is gearing up this year um, and getting ready for summer. The next category is our debt service. Uh, we have spent $1,253,197 on our debt service, and that is right on budget as we expected. 
this chart just shows the different categories and, and how the actual, the budget, and the prior year match up in each of these categories. And then this is our pie chart that shows 39% of our expenditures through March 31st went to public safety. Uh, admin services was the next category with 17%. Then public health and parks, recreation, and expo each had 15% then public works in our lowest category is debt service at 5%. Now I will comment that that debt service, that was only for the interest for the first half of the year that we've paid to date. Uh, the principal will come in, um, in September, or we'll pay it in August for a September due date. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them. Questions for Betty? Yeah, questions. <coughs> no. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Betty. Mm -hmm. Next item, please. Item 5, Administrative Communications. Good choice. Commissioners Tom Block, Public Works, Solid Waste. This is just a final reminder that this Saturday is our election electronic recycling event <coughs> that's going to be held um, at the Expo Center parking lot from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Rain or shine, I know the weather <laughs> might be a little iffy right now, but again, it's free collection of, of basically anything that has a cord or runs on electricity or um, batteries. So um, we hope we have a large participation because we can get a lot, of that, a lot of that kind of material out of the landfill. And it's again free of charge, except for CRT televisions and, and CRT right. monitors. There's a, uh, I think a twenty dollar charge for those. Also, also, um, I believe this is the weekend where it's kind of like the neighborhood complete or the community cleanup with lots of activity going on. I believe there's free brush removal at the Garrick Center, and I think waste management is opening up the landfill for free disposal in the morning. And we are also going to have an additional. Uh, household hazardous waste collection event Saturday to kind of tie everything in together. So, if you have anything that needs to get tossed away, this is the weekend to do it. So, <laughs> but that event will be again, um, again at our household hazardous waste facility, 131 Northeast 46th Street, about a quarter of a mile east of the roundabout at North Topeka Boulevard and 46th Street on the south side of the road. Again, that's free collection of all kinds of household hazardous uh, materials like paints, oils herbicides, pesticides, uh, we'll collect batteries up there, um, compact fluorescent light bulbs, um, whatever, you, whatever you got that should not go into the landfill. So, all right, thank you. Very good. Thank you, oh, Tom. And that is from 9 to noon on, on Saturday. 9 to noon. Thank you, Tom. Good morning, Commissioner Grandy Luby, Parks and Rec. I hope my event's a little more exciting than his. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, in honor of uh, Zura Credit Union's first anniversary, uh, next week um, from May 1st through May 5th from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., Skyline Park will have vehicle access to the top of Skyline Park. It is the highest point in Topeka. Um, it is the home of the Azura Trails, as along with the natural areas, and we're continuing to make improvements to that park as we go along. It's a be a great opportunity for the public if they have difficulties walking, they can drive right on up to the the top of uh, the park. So, any questions for that? I believe they are holding the Azura Credit Union is holding. Um, they're setting a world's record for the largest May basket. And that event was scheduled to be at Skyline Park, but I believe now it's going to be at the uh, uh, Topeka Shawnee <coughs> County Library at 1230. Um, I believe the um, news release is going out today on that. So um, you're all welcome to uh, see the world's largest uh, May basket. <laughs> that was exciting. Uh, what much more? <laughs> I thought so. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Curtis Sneed, Greater Topeka Chamber of Commerce. 
Given everything our nation experienced last summer and fall, it may be hard to believe that another election season is almost upon us, but it is. The deadline for filing for uh, six city council seats and the mayoral seat is uh, June 1st. And so I wanted you to know that the Chamber of Commerce is collaborating with the League of Women Voters and the uh, CRC and the Public Library to stage its candidate school on May 9th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. over at the Topeka Public Library. This will be a good opportunity for anyone who's considering entering public service to come and learn about the filing requirements, some of the technical requirements, the importance of keeping good campaign books, as well as learning about getting their message out and hearing about what it's really like to, to serve uh, in public office. So we encourage anyone who's interested in that to please come by May 9th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Curtis. Good morning, Commissioners. Cindy Evans, Shawnee County Extension. Just a reminder that tomorrow afternoon we will be honoring Jamie Kidd with her retirement at the Garden House at Lake Shawnee. So the reception will run from 3 to 6. The public is invited. The program will be at 4.30. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Les Crooks, Kansas Expo Center. Before I dive into our events this weekend, I just wanted to provide an endorsement for CSL. Uh, SMG's worked with them in many uh, areas. Uh, they're top-notch, they're uh, thorough, and they're unbiased, and I don't think that Shawnee County could have a better, uh, uh, hired a better firm to represent their interests. So, um, at the Expo Center this weekend, the American Quarter Horse Show, which is one of our larger horse shows, uh, starts on Friday, and then there's a prom, a wedding, a quinceanera, and Tom's e-waste event. <laughs> so, um, and then finally, uh, third Thursdays, which is the free event that takes place once a month, will return on May 18th and run through September. So that's a free event to the community. It takes place at Heritage Hall in the gazebo. Excellent. Okay. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you, Les. Others for administrative communications this morning. Commissioner Bueller. Well, before everybody gets ready for the weekend, although the forecast doesn't look all that great for the cleanup, it looks like it's going to be rainy. There is the Combat Air Museum pancake breakfast mm -hmm. starting tomorrow morning. I think at Saturday morning. Oh, Saturday, Saturday morning. Yeah. Sorry, I thought it was morning. Uh, and starting on Saturday morning and. Uh, they always, that's a big fundraiser for them, so hopefully everybody will come out and have pancakes first. I think I've got 8 o'clock. I don't know. I think I've got 7.30 or something like that. So. I go when I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a good event. Uh, thank you. I look forward to being there this Saturday. Uh, you know, as a commissioner, one of the responsibilities is helping constituents with different issues. And this past week, while helping gather information for a constituent, I came upon another issue, commissioners, that has deeply troubled me. Um, in the criminal justice system, one piece is that a person accused of a crime be competent to actually stand trial. That means that they understand the charges against them and they're able to assist in their defense. And when there's an occasion where a district court judge finds that a defendant may not be competent to stand trial, they have the ability to order that defendant committed to the state security hospital for evaluation and treatment. And when this occurs, there's a court order that's entered for that defendant to be transported from our county jail to Larnard, the state security hospital. And that term of evaluation is 90 days. And after that period, a determination is made whether the defendant is competent to stand trial and the trial goes forward or if there's a need for a continued stay at the st state security hospital for additional time for them to maybe become competent to the stand trial. Presently in the Shawnee County Department of Corrections, there are 12 individuals who have had court orders entered for evaluation at the state security hospital. And they're waiting for their evaluation. Some of these individuals have not been waiting one month, not been waiting two months, but have been waiting in excess of three months just to be admitted into the state security hospital for treatment and evaluation. 
this, commissioners, is a travesty of justice. It's a failure on the part of the state of Kansas. This is a denial of a, a victim's case moving forward. This is a denial of a defendant's basic constitutional rights to have their case heard in a timely manner. And finally, it's a failure of the state of Kansas to provide for its legal obligations. The director of the Shawnee County Department of Corrections, Brian Cole, has previously spoken to the commission and the public at large about the cost of incarceration of a mentally ill individual and how that is three times the cost of another individual. And so if individuals are housed at the Shawnee County Jail waiting for admission to the state security hospital of more than 90 days, that cost to the Shawnee County taxpayers is very burdensome and great. I've met with the Department of Corrections, uh, Brian Cole, the Shawnee County District Attorney, Mike Kage, and our County Counselor, Jim Crowell, regarding this issue, and have asked them all to press the state of Kansas to resolve this issue. But by this public administration communication this morning, I'm also asking to draw attention to this issue with the hope that the state of Kansas will take the action that is necessary to fulfill their legal and moral obligations to the taxpayers of Shawnee County. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, I have a short announcement to make. I feel it is prudent at this time to let my constituents, employees, and colleagues know that after going, undergoing recent medical tests, I have begun treatment for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. My doctors and I are optimistic about my prognosis, and I plan to tackle this head-on in a straightforward manner as I try to do all obstacles. As chair of the commission, I will continue to focus on my duty to serve the taxpayers of Shawnee County as an elected official. Thank you in advance for your support as I remain committed to openness, transparency, and accountability during this very difficult time. Uh, and in the immortal words of Forrest Gump, uh, that's all I've got to say about that. <laughs> Next item, please. Uh, executive session? There's not a need. We are adjourned.